creating consistent characters in AI can be tricky, but it's extremely useful. From creating a character to use for your print-on-demand business, to use across multiple products, and for storytelling, from comics to children's books, where you need the same character throughout the whole story. And as you can see on screen, this is a character that I will make in this video. Stay tuned to see the short video I made, using the method we will be covering in this video. But first, I want to show you how to do it. Just a quick note here. I will mainly be using the version 5.2 mid-journey model in this video. There may be newer versions out as you are watching this, so feel free to use them. But if you would like to get the same results I'm getting in this video, I would advise you to use the 5.2 model. The same rules should mostly apply to all models. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so we're going to start off with creating our character. Now, I got ChatGPT to write me a short story about a young boy named Jack, who, yes, I named after myself, and he goes on a journey to find the perfect present for his grandfather. So I wrote in the prompt, little boy character, multiple poses and expressions, front view, Pixar-styled character, simple, cute, full color, red t-shirt, blue pants, short, curly brown hair, with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Now, these are the important parts of the prompt. You want to make sure that you have part of the prompt as multiple poses and expressions. And you can also write in character sheet as well. So it just makes Midjourney create an image of that character multiple different times with different poses and expressions. So you can say multiple angles as well, and it will give you different angles of your character like here. And you want to give it your style, so I chose Pixar styled character for this one, which gives it a kind of 3D rendered look to it and not a 2D flat look. And it's good to add a few descriptions about the character. So I've got red t shirt, blue pants, short curly brown hair. You don't want to add too many descriptions of the character in Mid Journey, otherwise, it will get too confused and the results just won't come out as you hoped and always try to re-roll your results if you're not happy with them. Okay, so I like this one. And what you can do if some of your results come out clipped, so if the head's cut off a little bit or the feet, then what you can do is just do the zoom tool. So zoom out 1.5 or two times, and it should fill in those bits that were cropped before. Okay, so I've zoomed out slightly, and it's given me these options. They all look quite the same and just choose the one that you're happy with. Now, another important note is, which I didn't add in this prompt on purpose, but is to add white background into the prompt, as that will give you a nice white backdrop for your character to easily cut them out. But in this one, you can see it's got a blue backdrop, but don't worry too much, as there is a website which automatically cuts that out. So I thought I'd just show you that, just in case you created a character that you did like, but it had a color backdrop on it. Okay, so just save that to your computer. And you can go to this free website here, which allows you to crop your image into multiple images, which we will do with our character. So just select around each character and crop them and then save them as their own image. And then what we're going to do is remove the background from the character. And we're going to use backgroundcut.com, which is free to use and incredibly easy. And it does a really good job. So as you can see here, we've added in the image of our character, which you can see has a blue background, and it cuts it out perfectly. And then you just download that and continue the same with the rest of your images. All right, so now we're back in Mid Journey and just go down to the bottom left and click the plus icon and upload a file. And then select all the images you just saved with the background removed. And press enter. And there you go, the images are uploaded into Midjourney. Now what we're going to do is click on each individual image that we just uploaded, and we're going to save the URL. And you can open it in browser, and then right click, and copy image address. Now you can either store these links in another document if you want, just to keep a list of them, because what we're going to do is copy each one, and then paste it into our next prompt. So just go through and copy each URL. Just make sure there's a gap in between each one in Midjourney. And the more images you can use, the better really, because it just gives Midjourney more information to use. 
So I've got eight here. And then what you want to do after you've pasted in all the links, go back to the original prompt of the character that you created, copy that and paste it in after those links. So I'll just copy this and paste it in after. So in the prompt where it said multiple poses and expressions, we want to add in the pose that you're looking to achieve. So in this one, I'm going to add running pose and see what it makes. So we're giving Midjourney all of the information about this character so it can see through all those URLs what this character looks like. And then by giving it another prompt with a different pose, it should hopefully create a character that looks similar, but with the pose that you're wanting to use in your story. All right, and here's the first batch of images that Midjourney created. And they don't look too bad. The character still looks very similar, just a little bit different than our original, but if I saw that in a book, I probably wouldn't even notice. But there is a problem where the character is clipped off, so you just have to use that zoom out feature to then fill in those gaps. Or in the prompt, just make sure you don't have the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, as that makes it longer and it might clip off those top bits. So maybe just use either, I'd say maybe 4 by 5 aspect ratio would be good. So as you can see, those images had colored backgrounds. So I'm just going to try another prompt, but with white background. But like we did before, you can use that background cut website to cut the character out of the scene. I think it was creating a colored background because we had the word full color in the prompt. Now let's try delete that and see what it does. And we'll also add in white background. All right, these images actually came out a bit better. They've actually got a white background, except for one for some reason. Again, you'll just have to use the zoom out feature to make sure you've got the full character in shot. So I'm going to upscale this image and use the zoom out 1.5 times feature and see if that fills in the character. It did a really good job, actually. The top of the hair and the feet will be different. Obviously, these two here have their hair still clipped out, but you can just zoom out even more and it will fill those in. Your character may not have any clipping problems, but if you do, this is just a really good method to save those characters. Cool, so I like this image, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more, just so we can see if the hair gets filled in. And great, yeah, it did a really good job. Okay, so let's try a different pose or expression this time. So for this image, I'm going to change it to a scared expression, and see what Midjourney creates. The only problem is we do have the clipped off problem, but that's just because I've chosen the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So just make sure to address that when you create your characters. But yeah, it does look like our character. He's got a really good scared expression. Okay, on this one I've just zoomed out. To hopefully eliminate the clipping problem, I'm going to change the aspect ratio to 4 by 5, which should give it more height than width, which should hopefully not clip the character. Okay, and these came out much better. So, as you can see, just messing around with the settings, you can get some really good results. And here's another running pose, and in this one I actually put side profile as well into the prompt. So it shows him running on a slightly different angle than before. And then you can start adding the poses that you want to use in your story. So I created a few different poses and expressions of our character, which you can see here. If you'd like to know more about the prompts I've used, I've actually made a document containing them all in the description below, so please feel free to check that out. Now, you may be thinking it's all well and good having this character in different poses and doing different things, but they're all on a white backdrop and have no environment around them. Well, that's why now we're going to move into how to create an environment for your character and to make them feel like they belong in that scene. So this is perfect for, say, if you're creating a children's book, and you've got your character poses and expressions already, but they've got a white backdrop and you want to add them into the scenes of your story. So what you can do is follow the process from before once you've got all your characters ready, and cut out the background so that they are a PNG with a transparent background, so that when you place them inside another image of the environment, that they fit in there but without any white background behind them. Alright, so I've already made a bunch of backgrounds for my story. So here's an example of one of the environments that I've created for our story. As you can see, it kind of fits the same style of our character. It's bright, it's colourful, it looks kind of like a Pixar film. 
So this is the scene where our character Jack leaves the house on his little adventure. So what we're going to do now is get one of the images of the poses we created earlier and then place them into this image of the environment to make it look like it's one cohesive image. Now to do this, I'm going to use a free piece of software called Photopea. Now this is a web-based software. It works pretty much like Photoshop and it's just a really powerful tool. It's pretty crazy that it's free to use. But please don't be daunted by this as I know it can be a bit scary looking at all these icons everywhere, but I'll run you through on my workflow. So we're gonna come in, we'll go to File, New Project, and I'm going to create a document in Landscape Aspect Ratio. So just make sure you choose the right size for your project. And I'm gonna change the DPI to 150. So that's just the amount of pixels per inch. So the higher it is, the more detail should be in the image. All right, so I'll just import that image of the background, and then I'm going to place our character into it. So I'm gonna use this pose of Little Jack running. I'm guessing he's very excited to go on this adventure. And just adjust the size of the character because you don't want them too big or too small. And remember, you can always scale the background if you want to. Now, sometimes it might look like the character that you've just placed into the scene doesn't quite fit in. It might be too jarring for the background, like it might pop out too much, and you want to feel like the character is part of that scene. So I've got a few tips and tricks on how to make your character feel like it's part of that environment. So first of all, you want to create a new layer in between the character and the background, and then use the eyedropper tool to select the color of the ground underneath the character. And you may want to make it a bit darker. And then use the brush and change the opacity to low and make it a soft rounded brush. And then just paint under the character so it looks like a shadow on the path. And you can also use this burn tool which makes whatever area you go over darker. And as you can see, I've gone onto the character layer now and you can use the burn tool to just add a bit of darkness, just so it looks like he's coming into contact with the path. It's these subtle touches that can make a big difference in making it feel like a cohesive image. I think that actually looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And if you want to say change the brightness or saturation or contrast on each of the individual layers, you can do that. So you just go up to image, then adjustments, and brightness and contrast. And as you can see here, moving the slider makes this layer brighter, less contrasty, more contrasty. And you want to just move around the slider just so you feel like it fits in with the image perfectly. And you can do the same to the background as well, or any layer that you have in your project. As you can see, it just brings everything together. And it feels like this was created just using one prompt for the whole image and not two things that are put together. Okay, let's do another quick example. So in this part of the story, our character Jack is looking for the white rose, which is quite elusive and legendary in these parts. And he's getting it for his grandfather for his birthday. So I created a pose here of Jack reaching out for something. As you can see, I've placed him in, but he's looking the wrong way. So what we can do here is flip the character. Or you can flip the background if you want. So you go to Edit, Transform, and then flip horizontally. And there you go. And as you may have noticed, our character is missing a finger. If you do create an image that you like in Mid Journey and you notice that something is missing, like here, a finger, I'll show you a way how you can fix that image. And it's really easy to do. So what I'm going to do is grab this tool here, which is called the lasso tool, and just select one of the fingers that we want to copy. Just make sure you're on the layer of the character and then go to edit and copy and then edit and paste. And then use the arrow tool and move it across and then rotate and place it where you want it to go. And there you go, we've replaced a finger. And what you want to do is just take that finger layer and select the character layer together and merge layers as then they become one layer. Now you may be thinking, well, he's standing on the grass, but he doesn't look like he's 
standing on the grass really. It's kind of he's kind of just floating there. So this is another cool tip. So what we're going to do actually is copy part of the background and then paste it to the front of all the layers so that it's in front of his shoes. So I'm actually going to choose the polygonal lasso tool here to make straight lines. And I've got the background selected. So what I'm actually doing is just cutting out a very basic grass shape here, which I want to cover his shoes with. It looks like I'm going over the character, but I'm actually copying part of the background. Now you just have to make sure to complete the loop. Okay, once it's ready, just copy and paste and go to that layer and just move it up to the top of the list. And there you go. You can see it looks like there is some grass there and you can move that around. Now, if you want to get rid of these kind of harsh edges to the grass, I like to use the blur tool. Just go in and just blur it slightly, just kind of blends it in a bit more. I know this seems like it's extra work, but believe me, it does really make the image that much better. Now you can try prompting in mid-journey to try get the perfect image, but I find if you get two perfect images, say one of the character, one of the background, it's just a bit easier to take them into Photop, put them together, and then just do a bit of editing and you just get a really good result. Cool, I think that looks really good. If we look at the before and after, the small edits make a big difference. And then to save your image, just go to File, Export As, and then choose which file type you'd want. So I'm going to choose PNG, and then just save it. And after you've exported your final images, you can use a free or paid upscaler to make sure you're getting the best resolution of your image. And I'll leave a link below to a really good free upscaler. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the short story that I made. It's a very short children's story, which I made with ChatGPT and an AI voiceover. And of course, with all the skills that we learnt in this video with the character sheet method. I hope you enjoy it. In the heart of a green valley, Jack heard legends of a magical white rose atop the tallest hill, which bloomed only once a year. Desiring a unique gift for his grandfather's birthday, Jack embarked on the journey. With every step, gentle breezes whispered encouragement. At the peak, he discovered the radiant white rose glowing under the sun's embrace. Jack carefully picked it and descended, his heart full of joy. Handing over the rose, the petals shimmered and filled his grandpa with loving memories. I think that turned out really well. It was very short, but I think it shows you what can be done using this method. It opens up so many possibilities with the character that you've created, opening up so many storytelling opportunities. If you've learnt anything in this video, please give us a thumbs up, feel free to comment below, and make sure to check out our other videos on creating consistent characters. Just click the thumbnail on the screen to check it out. You won't want to miss it.